Since the debut of version 6 of Rebel, a series of updates have been released with dozens of small changes. There's a lot to learn about, so I created a summary of the most important features so you can get up to speed quickly. This tutorial covers the changes up to version 6.16. Let's start with some changes that are related to painting in Rebel. A shortcut has been added called Use Primary Color. By default, it is set to C. If you were using an older version of Rebel, the Clone Tool shortcut would be C, so you may need to update it manually. The Clone Tool is now Shift plus C. This command selects the primary color shown in the color picker. This has a number of uses, which tie into other new features. First, when using the multicolor mode for your brushes, you can press C to mix more of the original color into the paint on your brush. The original color refers to the most recent color you sampled and is shown in the color picker. Eventually, pressing C will clean the multicolored brush, but there is a faster way. A single press of the new Clean Dirty Brush shortcut found under Color in the Keyboard Preferences can clean multicolored and dirty brushes. You'll need to manually assign this a shortcut. I've chosen Home. I'll enable Multicolor and Paint, then clean my brush. As you can see, the paint color is pure and reverts back to the most recently selected color or your primary color. Same deal with the Dirty Mode. I can clean it with that shortcut. Optionally, I can also clean a dirty brush by selecting or sampling a new color, or by using the shortcut of C to select the primary color. By default, your dirty brush colors will no longer be added to the list of recent colors, but if you do want to save those colors, you can enable the new option in the tool's preferences. Next, let's take a look at a new way to switch between painting and blending, which is something many artists do often. Rather than having to switch brushes manually or toggle between paint modes with the 1 through 5 keys, you can now do it with a single shortcut of V. You can even assign V to one of the buttons on your tablet, pen, or something like an Express Key Remote, Stream Deck, or Loop Deck. This is very convenient, but there is another way to switch between painting and blending. Let's look for the option found in the tool preferences called Automatically Switch to Blend after painting for wet media. When you are using a wet media brush, such as oil slash acrylics or watercolor, this option will automatically toggle you to the blending mode after you lift your pen. I'll enable this and select a brush that is using the paint mode. As you can see, my brush deposits paint on the canvas, but as soon as I lift my pen, I am only going to be able to blend from here forward, unless I load my brush with paint again. This is meant to give you the aesthetic of painting traditionally. To load the brush with paint again, select or sample a color, use the shortcut of C to select the primary color, or the shortcut of V to toggle between paint and blend modes. It's important to note that this setting applies globally to all wet media. It feels faster to switch to the blender with V than to load the brush with color, so I prefer to keep this option disabled. By default, when you invoke it with Alt, the Pick Color tool works by hovering over a color and then clicking on it. However, if you prefer, there is an option in the color preferences that allows you to only hover to sample a color rather than click first. Now all I need to do is hold Alt and the color is sampled. There are a couple of new modes for the Liquify tool. If you want to lock in some of your distortions while still being able to work on the image, you can use the new Bake Changes button. This will freeze the distortions, allowing you to distort more while erasing up until the point when you baked the image. To explain how this works, I'll demonstrate on this template that is included with my Rebel video course, available at aaronrutten.com. If you're interested in learning all there is to know about Rebel, I highly recommend taking my course. I'll use the soft fast variant with the push mode to make my hair taller. Maybe I want to keep that change, but I still need to distort some of the face. I'll bake the changes to the hair. Now I can expand the entire head and remove some of the distortion near the hair with reconstruct. I am able to subtract distortion from the head without reversing what I did to the hair earlier. If you want to go back to before baking the changes, simply undo. Similar to reconstruct, but with a different purpose, is the smooth mode. To see how this works, select the shattered brush variant in the push mode. Then scramble some of the grid. Now select the smooth mode and paint over the jagged pixels. As you can see, the pixels become gradually smoother, but retain the overall distortion shape. I can also use Reconstruct over that to bring the grid back into its original shape. Next, we'll explore some new features that affect brush creation. 
Some changes were made to the alpha blending modes in Rebel. For example, Lighten can make brushes that build up more gently with easier blending between opacity levels. Because the alpha blending modes were changed, a few brushes found in the Pastels Texture group and the Watercolor Granulation group have been updated. If you're using an older workspace, you'll need to download and import those new brushes manually. There's a link in the Rebel blog. Scaling shape and grain is now much more precise, especially near the lower values. And best of all, you can now scale each axis independently. This will allow you to stretch dab shapes to make them flatter or rounder. And I can stretch grain patterns to make water ripples or wood grain. This is a very handy update. Now for some changes that were made to layer masking in Rebel. It is now possible to create a layer mask from a selection. For example, I'll use the lasso tool to make a scalloped edge along the inside of this layer. Then I'll subtract from the selection to make eye holes. Now if I right click on the layer and choose add layer mask, I'll get a mask in the shape of that selection. If you'd like to duplicate or transfer masks to another layer, you can copy and paste them. I'll right click on the layer mask and copy it. Then I'll delete the layer mask. I'll clear this layer and draw a rectangular selection that covers the head. Then I'll use an opaque brush to fill it with a striped pattern. Now I'll right click on the layer again and paste the mask. As you can see, the same mask shape has been applied. I could of course paste this onto additional layers like the yellow ball, but because the mask pastes into the same position, anything outside of it will be invisible. I'll select the eye mask layer again. Normally if you transform a layer with a mask, the mask will move with the layer. However, if you would like a mask to remain in a fixed position, you can right click on the mask and choose lock layer mask position. Now when I transform the layer, the pixels move, but the masked area does not. This allows me to experiment with different details inside of the mask shape. The fill tool even works with masks. For example, I can select gray, click on the mask icon, and fill inside the masked area on the canvas. Now the opaque mask has become semi-transparent. If you look in the mask icon, you can see where I filled it with gray. Let's move on to look at some features that involve selections. Restore last selection can bring the previous selection back after it has been deselected. I'll make a rectangular selection, fill it with white, then deselect the selection. I'll blend the edges of the rectangle, then go to Edit Selection Restore Last Selection. The selection reappears, and I can continue using it. I'll use it to remove the interior of the selection, and now I have an interesting border. It is now possible to save selections as a PNG file and then load them at any time. I'll make a polygonal starburst selection and go to Edit Selection to save it. Then I will make a different starburst selection, fill it with yellow, deselect it, then load the selection again from Edit Selection. I'll use the topmost selection to remove some of the underlying shape. You can also turn a stencil into a selection in the Edit Selection menu. This could be a convenient way to store your selections while being able to visualize them inside of Rebel. The Stencils panel can be found in the Window menu. I'll clear the canvas and reload that Starburst selection. Next, I'll go to the Options menu in the Stencils panel and choose Create Stencil from Selection to make that Starburst into a stencil. I can see an icon showing what the stencil looks like. These stencils will be saved in your Rebel library folder, so you can easily back them up and import them into other workspaces. Now I can load this stencil as a selection at any time from the Edit Selection menu. Next we have some new filters to try. Rebel has a Brightness Contrast filter, but a more effective filter for modifying the brightness and contrast of your image is Levels. I can use the stops at the base of the histogram to adjust the tonal range. For example, bringing the dark stop inward a bit makes the shadow areas richer. This also has the effect of clipping the almost black colors, which adds contrast at the expense of shrinking the tonal range of the image. In other words, there are now fewer shades of light and dark compared to before I applied that filter. The same goes for the light colors. I can bring the stop inward, but if you look at my waves, the foamy areas quickly lose detail. If this is the effect you want, then it's okay to clip some of the darks or lights but just be aware that overdoing it can quickly ruin your image. This is a destructive filter, so you won't be able to reverse the effects by applying the filter again. It could be a good idea to duplicate the layer first, then apply the filter to the duplicate. There's a lot more to explain about how the other controls work, so I won't get into that today. 
It might suffice just to use the auto levels option to automatically adjust the stops and link the dark, light, and midtones together. Now if I move the auto level slider, the tonal range compresses or expands, creating more or less contrast. While this is enabled, manual adjustments are not permitted. When limiting the effects of your filters to a specific color range, you can now use the pick color button to click on a target color to choose a range. Curves is another new filter that does basically the same thing as levels, but gives you more control over which values or colors are affected. Curves allows me to move the value stops in two dimensions. Moving a stop left and right is just like moving the input stops in levels. It clips the values, but only those nearest the stop. As you can see, I can slightly brighten the waves without losing all the detail. One way to use curves is to create an S-curve to add contrast. But again, don't overdo it. I can also adjust the individual channels for red, green, and blue. This shifts the hue to increase or decrease each color. This can be useful for correcting a color cast. Subtle Sharpen is also new. It is the same filter as Sharpen, but you can apply it in a single click, and its strength is very low. Use this when you want just a tiny bit of sharpening. Now for some changes to the UI in Rebel. You can now import and export mixing palettes as a PNG file to repurpose them. I had been using the reference image panel to load my color gamut masking palettes, but now I can use the mixing palette instead. It's much faster to set up that way. You can zoom in and out by holding Z and dragging. When saving as JPEG, there is now an additional dialog that allows you to control the level of compression. The more you compress an image, the smaller the file size will be, but that's at the expense of reducing the color and detail of the image. I would avoid saving your originals as JPEG since compression can build up with each save. This format is better suited for making a fast preview of your work to share online. For JPEGs, you can control the quality from 1 to 100. A lower value will degrade the quality more. A higher value will yield a larger file size. There is also a size setting which can quickly make the image dimension smaller. You can choose from presets or a custom size. By holding control and dragging in Rebel, you can change your brush size. In addition to the circle visualization showing your brush size, there is also an optional status box that can show your brush size numerically. You can toggle this off and on in the preferences under tools. There is a global setting that affects the overlay of all of the brush properties, or if you only want to hide it when using the size shortcut, you can do that as well. Another new feature expands on the visual feedback you get when you change certain brush properties. By default, some volume properties are hidden in the properties panel. You can click on the options menu to show these. Your brush cursor can show visual cues for each of these properties. For example, size makes the icon larger or smaller. Opacity loading makes it more or less opaque. Water oiliness shows a more or less filled icon. Pressure grows from the center of the icon. And the length icon varies in length. If you like, you can now assign a shortcut to invoke the first 10 brushes in your favorites. By default, 6, 7, 8, and 9 will select the first four favorite brushes. You can assign other shortcuts manually if you want to use this feature. I have way too many brushes for this to be useful, but it might work well for you if you only have a few favorites. The last change in Rebel 6.1 is to the reference image panel. To load an image in the previous version of Rebel, you could either click on the import button or drag and drop a file from your computer. Now you can paste an image from the clipboard. You can use a screen snipping tool like the one found in Windows to copy images to the clipboard. There you go, those were the major changes in Rebel 6.1, but there were dozens of minor fixes as well. If you'd like to learn more about how to use Rebel, check out my video courses available at AaronRutten.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.